Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason Jensen and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I paint brick walls. We're going to be using uh, wood walls that are laser cut. Uh, the walls are from caseysworkshop.com. So let's head over to the workbench and get to it. So for today's project, we are going to use some laser cut brick walls from Casey's Workshop. So please visit uh, caseyworkshop.com. Uh, they have brick walls on there that you can buy. Uh, and they also have brick structures that you can buy. Next, we're going to get our paints ready. I'm using Heritage Brick. Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Antique Gold, Burnt Umber, and one called French Wine. And I'll list these uh, in the description uh, below the video. We're going to use um, a palette to put our paint on, and I'm just using the lid off of a coffee container. Uh, I always use this because it just cleans up so well. You just wash the paint off it, and you're ready to go. The container, I keep real dirt in. And what's nice is my sifter fits fits on it really nice so we'll start with heritage brick and mix it with a little of the antique gold um, another color that's similar is yellow ochre I'm running low on this color. So. I actually don't think I'm going to have enough. Okay, I'm running low on that. So we're going to use some burnt sienna. And this is definitely not an exact science. I'll throw in a little bit of the French red. And a little bit of the antique gold. I want kind of an orangey color. I think the orange color is a better representation of old brick. I'm adding a little bit more of the uh, French wine to it. Okay, now notice I did not evenly stir it up because we want a variation in the brick. Next, we're going to take um, some foam to apply the paint. The foam is from this sponge right here that you can get at any hardware store or 
Home Depot or Lowe's and it's used for cleaning grout off of tile. You see it says right here, premium density is idea for removing excess grout. So I tore off a corner of it. And we'll simply dip it in there and then take a bunch off. And the reason we're using a sponge and not just painting it on is because it gives it a little bit of a texture. So you want that brick to have a little bit of a, a texture. So it looks more like real brick. And this doesn't have to be... Um, a solid coverage if you want a little more variety in the color Now the areas that we missed the first time will cover up a little bit more with this color. You don't want to go too thick with this because you don't want it to fill in the, uh, the mortar joints we'll fill that in later using uh, some joint compound just going over the walls to make sure that the uh, they all match Okay, that is step one. Now we'll let these uh, dry and then we'll come back in with a fine brush and actually paint some individual bricks. Next, we're going to paint some individual bricks using a fine brush. And I just go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby uh, and get some inexpensive paintbrushes. We're going to start by using burnt umber. This part takes quite a while and quite a bit of patience. We're just going to paint individual bricks. You don't have to worry about making them 
super neat and clean. If it goes into the mortar joint a little bit, that's okay because we will add joint compound. We'll smear joint compound over this and it'll fill in the cracks and it'll clean up the edges of the individual bricks. Now you can see I've painted uh, individual bricks using burnt umber. Now I'll go in with uh, French wine or any type of a, a deeper red color will work. And we'll just again start to paint some individual brick. Now to get this, uh, to get the deep red to uh, really show up, you're going to want to go into areas where it's maybe a little bit lighter. So it'll really stand out. If you want to, you can also go in with the antique gold, or like I said, you could use a uh, yellow ochre, or really any of the colors. You could use raw sienna and do some individual brick. We'll do a little bit of both. We'll do the antique gold and the raw sienna. I think the more variety that you put on it, uh, the more detailed it's going to look. And you don't have to do a lot, just a few here and there. So we'll use the same technique and do all of our walls. And then we'll come back and after it's all dry, we'll add some joint compound to it. So all of the painting is done. And I'll try to show you close up. It's not perfect, uh, but the grout that we put on it next We'll definitely clean it up. So, next, we are going to use joint compound. So, I'm simply going to get some on my finger, and you're definitely going to want to have some uh, paper towels handy. So I've just got some on my finger. I'm going to smear it on. And then as you can see, I just wiped it off. Now you'll want to wipe it off maybe in a different direction going down.
Now we'll let that sit for a minute. I'm just, I'm just going to, uh, it's clear, clean water. I know the container is not, but it's uh, regular water. You just want to get your finger moist. Um, it's not very wet. It's a little bit damp. And wipe some more of that off. Okay, now we'll go ahead and do the rest of the walls the same way. So just dip your finger in it, smear it on, making sure that you're getting it in all the cracks. Once they start to dry, you can wet your finger a little bit and take some more of the uh, white residue off of the face of the bricks. Kind of nice to leave some of the the white on there, just because on an older building the uh, the grout would actually um, wash down uh, the building a little bit, maybe stain the brick. So we'll let these sit and dry uh, really well and then we'll come back in with some pastel chalks and weather them. Next you'll want to go in with your knife and scrape out any extra joint compound that's dried around the windows or openings. The back side, the back side of the exacto blade works the best for this. Now for the fun part. We're going to use our pastel chalks and we are going to lean towards using the uh, reddish color and the orange color. We're not going to do a lot, um, just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it with this. We're just going to streak down some of the brick color And probably more towards the bottom
So I'm going in with the uh, brick red. I don't know if you'll be able to see that color. Uh, but it's kind of a, a brick red. It matches it uh, pretty well. Then we'll also use uh, some of the orange. Hopefully there's not too much glare and may be looking pretty white to you, but actually there's quite a bit of the brick color showing. And if you're not doing an old brick building, uh, maybe it's a new building, then you're not going to want to, uh, you're going to want to skip this step. You could also use a, uh, a really light gray and possibly have some of that washing down. Just here and there, just to add a little bit of variety to it. Not much. Then, depending on where your model is going to be sitting, you're, you may want to add some dirt along the bottom. So we're going to use a, a dark brown. We'll just go along the bottom, just add a little bit of dirt. So I guess that wraps it up for this project. Um, I really enjoy working with um, wood brick. Um, the laser cutting is deep enough that allows you to put in some grout. And then all of this can be glued together with just wood glue or Elmer's glue. So great material to work with. When you put your structure together, for the corners, you can get these brick corners. So this is an example of what it would look like using that brick corner. Or you can bevel your edges both at a 45 degree angle and put it together. Here is an example of uh, the beveled edge. And you can see it fits together really nice. I wanted to share with you a couple examples of some other brick walls that I've done. And you can see that by putting some old signs on it and sanding it, that it gives the brick a, a really nice look. Really shows off uh, the brick wall. Another example of some old signs.
I hope you enjoyed today's video. I highly recommend getting on the internet and doing a little bit of research on brick buildings and really notice the color and when you're out in public uh, really notice the brick buildings and the texture on them uh, the different colors doing some research ahead of time will really help in your modeling well if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload more videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy modeling.